You're listening to Public Safety First, a podcast to help you learn about the First Responder Network Authority and how you can be part of the future of public safety technology. And now, your host, Dave Buchanan. Over the last several weeks, you've heard episodes where we've had terrific dialogue with public safety professionals that we met at APCO and at the IAFC Fire and Rescue International Conference. We heard firsthand about their use of FirstNet and the future of public safety communications. Today, I'm joined by the executive committee of our Public Safety Advisor Committee. Our PSAC is made up of individuals who represent professional organizations that represent various disciplines in public safety. The PSAC provides FirstNet with advice and expertise about public safety operations and a critical component to the operation of FirstNet. I'm first going to turn to our PSAC chair, Paul Patrick, to talk to us a little bit about why you're involved with the PSAC, Paul, and what excites you most about FirstNet. Thanks, Dave. It's really an honor for me to be uh on the PSAC. I represent the National Association of State EMS Officials, which is the organization that I recently served as the chair of. Very honored to represent all of the EMS directors from all of the 50 states and the territories as we look at emergency medical services as a discipline. Uh, I've been involved in EMS for over 30 years, originally volunteering in my community as an EMT and being able to respond to various calls for emergency medical services. So it's been an honor for me to serve originally on the PSAC. I was one of the charter members of the PSAC and the executive committee and now as the interim chair. It's a pleasure for me to see how this group has progressed and moved forward in looking at the great strides that FirstNet built with AT&T has shown their commitment to public safety, to public safety communications, and to the issues that EMS needs and also is looking forward to as we move into the future. So FirstNet is obviously a great opportunity for emergency medical services to move forward in the future. Today we spent some time planning for our work in 2019. I'm per- personally excited about uh, the partnership we have with the PSAC and the work we're going to be able to do together. Uh, Paul, talk a little bit about what you think um, are some of the different things the PSAC is going to be able to do for FirstNet as we work together to bring about the very best first responder network. I know we were all excited as we looked at uh, opting in and opting out, and that became the focus for several years as we moved forward. And once we reached that milestone and contracts were established uh, and we've been moving forward, as a PSAC, we're changing our focus now to help the 43 members of the Public Safety Advisory Committee now be more of an advocate for their network as we move forward in public safety. And as our network helps us to achieve the most amazing things that we haven't even come to grips with yet in emergency medical services as we're looking at such things as being able to transmit data that we've never been able to before, not just video, but data from a patient, information about the patient, uh, even getting into potentially, uh, I mean, we've always done EKGs, which is an electrocardiogram, but being able to to dive into the world of uh, potentially sonograms or what's at the incident and be able to help guide patient decisions. Those are exciting things for us in our field to be able to realize that to a patient receiving facility, we can give them more current updated information on a single patient, mass casualty and, and major incidents and things that happen out there. We'll be able to not only sort and sift, but be able to get the right patient to the right facility in the quickest time possible so that they can get the best care and hopefully recover from whatever their injury, illness, or accident is. In 1972, when Johnny and Roy from uh, the TV show Emergency with Squad 51 would respond and do things that were totally Hollywood, real Star Trek-ish, as you would like to say, we never thought it would happen. But now with FirstNet, all the things that they did and a lot of what's on Star Trek is actually a reality. And to answer your question about where PSAC is going in 2019, we've been planning ahead. One of the things that we're excited about is that we need engagement from all PSAC members. We need every member to be able to understand the network. It's their network. It's public safety's network. Be able to answer questions and help us take that message out to all their associations. We have some pretty exciting things coming up to be able to do that next year to help that message get out. Thanks, Paul. That's terrific. 
Todd Early has been around FirstNet for a long time. He's been the single point of contact from the state of Texas since 2013. He's currently the Director of Communications for the Texas Department of Public Safety, and he also serves on our PSAC Executive Committee. Todd, your department is one of the largest, if not the largest, customer of FirstNet uh, in the nation. You've been operationally involved in the deployment of FirstNet. Can you talk a little bit about that experience and what that's been like for you and your colleagues in Texas? Thanks, Dave. You know, we've had the, the opportunity to deploy and and uh, also activate uh, some of the response assets uh, of FirstNet over the the past uh, five or six months, at least five times. Um, several of those were on wildfires uh, in, in Texas. Two of those were on uh, shooting incidents in Texas. FirstNet has really allowed us uh, in public safety from the communications side to really become proactive in communications planning. And historically, we've been reactive. And what I mean by that is historically, we have always uh, responded to the need once the first responder got downrange and had issues with communicating. Now that we have FirstNet, we, we have become proactive. So when any incident happens, uh, one of our first reactions from the communications planning side is really to uh, make a proactive call. We find out information about the network, uh, the coverage in that area, uh, decide whether we need deployable assets to respond, uh, and we make those calls right up front so that when the responders are en route to the incidents, we're able to provide them a lot of information to their fingertips so that they can communicate when they get to that incident. Uh, during the recent wildfires, we deployed FirstNet deployable assets to those locations to assist with coverage in the area. And what it really allowed us to do for the first First time deploying some of those wildfire assets, we were able to take cached up first net devices and put them inside the, uh, the mutual aid uh, fire uh, assets that were responding. Uh, and for the first time, we were able to actually geolocate and track those fire trucks and wherever they were at responding to those wildfires on a GIS map. Uh, and really, that provided us situational awareness into where the different assets were at, uh, where the locations were at, and, and something that we've never had in the past when it comes to wildfire response. In, in regard regard to the other two incidents, uh, when, when the shooting incidents happened, we were able to immediately find out information about the network. We were able to find out if those locations had coverage, didn't have coverage. We made calls and were able to respond deployable assets to those locations to ensure that we had the coverage and the uh, bandwidth that we needed in those locations. But it also helped us in the planning of where we put our, our command post, because historically we typically put a command post in a location and then we tell everybody where that's at. Now that we've really change the, the paradigm of the way we respond, we're able to make sure that the locations that we select have the right coverage, that these locations provide the, the necessary abilities that we need to put those command posts and provide uh, resources to the responders when they get to those locations. I know in Texas, you've really emphasized uh, collaboration with local public safety. You've conducted a lot of outreach and education, and it's a big part of the way you're operating now, now that FirstNet's operational. What kind of questions are you getting from those across the state and what kind of questions do they have today about FirstNet that might be different than the questions they were asking a year two ago or two years ago or before that? Well, Dave, I think there's really a, an era of excitement. Public safety has long advocated for this network. They've needed, they deserve this network. And we've really gone from conceptual network to a network that's being deployed, in actuality being deployed much faster than what any of us in public safety, you know, really ever expected. And really a lot of the questions that we get now are, what's the coverage look like? When am I going to get the coverage if I don't have it? What's it going to cost me and how soon can I get it? Because as public safety hears these use cases, as public safety learns of the technology and the innovation that this is going to put in the hands of the first responders, uh, they're very excited about it and they want it sooner than later. I thought we had a great dialogue uh, this morning about uh, the future of the PSAC and how we're going to continue to work together to advocate for public safety in our mutual goal of making this the best network it can be for, for first responders. Talk a little bit about what you hope we can achieve together and, and how we might um, continue to drive this forward to make sure we're getting the right inputs from public safety and we work together on that. You know, Dave, it's, it's really truly an exciting time and being able to, to take a look at this and, and what uh, information that the PSAC and the representations of these associations can provide to the build out of this network. You know, we talk a lot and have historically over the past several years talked a lot about the network and we've talked a lot about priority and preemption. But when you really look at the innovation that this network is going to put in the hands of our first responders, it's going to provide tools and technology that we have never even thought about. And one of those things is solutions driven. And now what solutions can FirstNet provide to public safety first responders that we've never had or that we've never 
thought about that can help fill the gaps of the needs of our first responders and the things that they deal with, whether it's hurricanes, wildfires, everyday operations, uh, to make sure that what is put in their hands, what the innovation that comes out of it, and the focus that's put on this network is really received from input from public safety first responders in these very important associations that are on the PSAC. And I now want to turn to Mel Meyer from the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. Mel represents the Major County Sheriffs of America organization on our PSAC. And Mel, Oakland County, from my perspective, has been a leader in Michigan and a leader really across the country in working through law enforcement communications issues, interoperability issues for the last 20 years. I know this has really been a central piece of your sheriff's uh, mission is to improve communications. And you recently became a FirstNet customer. Can you talk a little bit about what that has been like and that how that change has affected the Oakland County Sheriff's Office? Absolutely, Dave. It's very exciting for us to do this. It's something we've been working for for many, many years. So one of the first things that we did is we got with our local AT&T FirstNet representative. And I sat down to really talk about what we want to start doing with our hundreds and hundreds of mobile data computers, all of our handheld devices, all the things that we're putting out in the field, where do we start? We started with some handheld devices where, well, iPhones. We took the iPhones and we started switching over about 100 at a time. And I got to tell you, the excitement when we had these guys out in the field start turning on their phones for the first time, seeing that FirstNet logo pop up on the screen and knowing that they had a dedicated network built for them that has priority and preemption built in, it was exciting. I know that when I got my phone, I got to tell you, when I turned it on, I was super excited to see that it actually was getting the bandwidth speeds in a crowded room full of people, hundreds of people, and I never had a problem streaming video coming off one of our video servers. That's just unparalleled for us in the past. We couldn't get it. It didn't work. We have big arenas. We have hundreds of thousands of people using this. Our deputies are out there using their these, these handheld devices. For the first time, they actually had dedicated bandwidth they got the data. So the second thing we did is we started working with some of our partners, Sonom came in, and we bought a couple hundred Sonom devices and started putting them out in the field. I gotta tell you, it's a great device for us because it's hardened, it works out in the field, the guys can abuse them a little bit, and they take the abuse. For the sheriff, it was just getting the information that he wanted the road patrol deputies to have in real time. Before we had to queue up, we had to wait. Sometimes we didn't even get on the network because there was too much traffic. Now with AT&T's FirstNet and our FirstNet network, we're getting it. We're on board. We used it recently with the Woodward Dream Cruise. We had over 100,000 people lined up and down Woodward, and over the course of three days, about a million people. And yet inside that area, we had video from our helicopters streaming down to first responders on the road. We had first responders using applications, being able to send situational awareness to each other, incidents going on in and around the activity, real time. We've never been able to do that. It's very exciting for us. When we started looking at things like our unmanned aerial vehicles, we started putting the UAVs up and we're sending the video back with FirstNet service. It's improved it greatly. And the quality of the video is what we're talking about. Instead of getting a low definition signal, we're getting high def signal. We can actually see what we need to see. This is for the first time where we've been able to say that. The next we started looking at some of the more unique things we do with our robots and some of the sensors and devices we have out in the field. But I got to tell you, the most exciting part for us has been this new biometric application that we're putting out in the field. It's called BlueCheck and we use that to access a fingerprint database. That hooks up and back feeds through our mobile data computer, Wi-Fi and LTE signal. And as we start putting these FirstNet deployed vehicles out in the field with these blue check devices, we're looking to eliminate and as well as capture people that need to be arrested when they, we try to verify their identity. If you're not who you say you are or if you're somebody trying to hide your identity, where to find you? That's cool stuff. So describe that application a little bit more. What, how did you uh, used to conduct that, that effort and, and how has it improved now that you have FirstNet? With FirstNet service, what we've got is dedicated bandwidth. So instead of waiting in line for us to get data as it pushes through and we have to keep units out on the field tied up waiting for information to come back, we're able to push large files across the uh, LTE airwaves and it gets to the patrol cars where they need to go. And that was not possible with our other service because we were just another customer. 
You've been a member of the PSAC since 2014. You recently joined our uh, executive committee. We work today to plan out um, some of the things we want to work on together in 2019. Tell me a little bit about what you're most excited about in this partnership with the PSAC and the First Responder Network Authority. Well, Dave, coming from where we were in a planning phase and putting task teams together, where in fact we were just trying to plan on best practices, use case scenarios to help design this network, into actually using it this quick, it's it's not imaginable for me at all sitting here five years ago thinking about what we can do with FirstNet. We are so far beyond that. Now what we can actually do is start planning on new applications, new services, new database connectivity, and the sharing of data as we move forward. The role of the PSAC is really to help give the FirstNet authority the ideas, the priority is that we want to see these rolled out, whether it's going to be about situational awareness, real-time geolocation data, whether it's about sensor data, all those other things, that's where the PSAC comes into play. And when I look at the law enforcement folks that I represent out there, whether it's through the major county sheriffs, the national sheriffs, all the other associations with the major city chiefs, IACP, these people have such a wealth and depth of knowledge that they're ready to do it and give it to FirstNet Authority to help make those prioritizing decisions, especially when we're talking about investment. If we're looking at investing dollars in towers in a location to bring up better coverage, so be it. But if we're talking about developing an application, a suite of applications that actually help situational awareness, getting data out to the field, creating APIs that allow disparate systems to connect to each other through the cloud in a secure database with CGIS level grade safety, that's a win. And that's where the PSAC is going to help because we're going to help prioritize what needs to get done and we're going to work with folks that, that honestly, that one of the best partners you could have picked, AT&T. And I got to tell you, I think about it as a force multiplier. When I think about the feet on the street, the information that they need, what you've done with the FirstNet Authority, what we've built with our FirstNet network, and now with our partner at AT&T, we're doing pretty good. Thanks, Mel. Really appreciate that. Thanks for your time today. No, thank you, sir. I'd like to now turn to Chief Mike Dyke, our newest member of the Public Safety Advisory Committee. Chief Dyke, what made you want to get involved with the FirstNet Public Safety Advisory Committee? Thanks. Uh, so my name is Mike Dyke. I'm the Fire Chief at 12 Valley Fire and Rescue, and I represent the Metropolitan Fire Chiefs Association on the PSAC. It was a great opportunity to get involved. Uh, I replaced uh, Chief Niles Ford from Baltimore uh, just this last June. Uh, and for me, it was a great opportunity because I, you know, with all of public safety across the country, help play our part in getting FirstNet to begin with, the D-Block uh, and the public safety spectrum. Then in, at our local level, in my state of Oregon, uh, I chaired the committee that did the state plan review and, and recommended to our governor to opt in. I sat on SAFECOM, uh, so I played a role in, in that piece, representing the Metropolitan Chiefs uh, in that venue also. And, and really to kind of go full circle now to be a, a member of the PSAC and provide input back to FirstNet on what our network needs as we build it out over the course of the next 25 plus years. Uh, it's a great opportunity to represent my association, my industry, and really you know, move it towards what public safety needs into the future. What do you think, as you look across your profession, the fire services profession, what do you think are some of the most important attributes that your colleagues see in FirstNet? And what about that uh, you think is most exciting for your colleagues? One of the pieces that I think is the most important is our network. It's a public safety network that's built to the level of reliability and capability that we need. And that's going to open opportunities for us that we've never had. We've been reliant on commercial networks and for those reasons you know we've never really thrown a lot of mission critical functionality behind what we were asking from it I think in the future we'll be able to actually put those mission critical tasks you know and focus them on the network and I'm excited to see w how public safety in the future will leverage it to make us more efficient more effective and make our firefighters safer in the work that they're doing earlier today during our planning session we had a chance to talk a little bit about location-based services and how important important that attribute is going to be for, for the fire services and really for public safety at large. Can you talk a little bit about that particular aspect of FirstNet and how important that's going to be for the fire services profession? Absolutely. So location-based services, 
there's, I mean, everything resides with that. In the actual incident location itself, there's so much data that exists today that we can bring to the hands of our responders, where they're going, what's there, uh, other uh, layers of data, geospatial data in, in some cases, pre-plans, information about the buildings and the environments that they're going into. Uh, when you have the responders connected to the FirstNet network, they'll bring the location-based services of them, themselves where they're actually at. Uh, this would be the first time in history where an incident commander could sit out uh, side of a building and know where firefighters actually are inside that building uh, during firefighting operations. Um, down to, you know, all the other data that can be collected, biometrics. I mean, the list really goes on and on on what location-based services will bring to us. Uh, and, and it's frankly an exciting day for, uh, to be able to start to walk down some of those technological advance, advancements. We're all seeing firsthand in the news every single day about the tragedies associated with the wildfires out west. As a western fire chief, can you give us your perspective about um, those experiences and what that's like? The West is experiencing, uh, in some cases, unprecedented fires, largest in some of the state's histories. And, you know, it's, what's been great this summer uh, is we have FirstNet, and FirstNet is leaning forward, even though, uh, by contract, they weren't going to have some of the resources, the SAT Colts and other things available until the fall. They're using their uh, some of their business-as-usual assets and deploying them to, on FirstNet, with, as FirstNet, to some of the fires. And the incident commanders in the in the wildfire firefighters and, and our structural folks that are showing up to do structural protection are leveraging those assets and the first net network to push live information between the command uh, staff and the frontline firefighters uh, doing structural protection where exactly is the fire what you know videos of fire behavior and the type of uh, combustibles that the fire is moving through uh, it, it's it's something that according to you know one of my assistant chiefs who's an incident commander uh, for one of the state teams they've never had that amount that level of data and that amount of situational awareness at their fingers Fingertips, and so I'm I'm excited because it makes our firefighters uh, more effective. The command staff can better plan uh, for uh, resources they're going to need uh, to get ahead of the fire and to, to stop the loss of life and loss of property. Uh, and our firefighters operate in a much safer environment when they can be told what's happening, uh, live weather conditions. I mean everything you can imagine that comes with a data network uh, that's public safety grade that's being put in. The hand, in their hands in the field. So um, we've been really pleased with the response uh, from FirstNet. Uh, we've had several fires that they've come out. Uh, and, and the most recent, they actually uh, positioned the SAT Colt to where they had full coverage over the entire fire footprint. Uh, and that gave the wildland crews and the, and the firefighters that were fighting that fire uh, direct connection to the command post and, uh, and, and a, at a high level uh, and a high data speed to be able to share a lot of information back and forth. Can you talk a little bit more about um, the next generation of public safety professional? What are their expectations for FirstNet? Well, their expectation uh, is that they're surprised that it wasn't already here and, and it wasn't being utilized uh, in public safety. Uh, I, I, uh, I've had several times when police chiefs and fire chiefs have said, well, I'm not that interested because my organization doesn't use broadband data. To which uh, my my answer is usually well you don't you don't realize what your your boots on the ground are actually using they're just using their own device not the device that you uh, you give them so uh, what I've seen is we we put it, uh, hardware in their hands uh, smartphones and tablets and then just said use it we haven't given them a lot of specifics but that next generation comes up with ideas on how to actually use different applications to be more effective at their job on their own. Uh, long before we had any kind of a, a street mapping uh, application or a pre-plan uh, application, they were using Google Street View to pull up uh, a front view of a building uh, and do as much of a 360 view of that uh, address that they were responding to to know prior 
to arrival, if it was a residential fire, where were the bedrooms, uh, was it a split level, was there anything they get from the aerial view, and they were actually chalk talking what they were going to do the second that they par uh, parked the apparatus uh, before they even got there by just using consumer applications that they, they could get their hands on. Uh, we deployed tablets and uh, and they just started using using them. That's what they do. They've always uh, grown up in environments where they've had uh, technology in their hands. Uh, they've always had. They grew up and went through high school with a smartphone and and uh, they text. Uh, they they do a lot of things that we didn't do uh, early on in my career. Uh, but now since they've always grown up that way, the expectation uh, that they come into the uh, public safety service is that we have it that for them and they want to use it so they're they're actually our biggest champions and come up with with the greatest they've come up with the greatest ideas on how we should be using technology and public safety on that first net network so one of the questions we get asked is uh, first nets new it's rapidly evolving and changing how do we get this information in the hands of first responders uh you know the the chiefs of the departments are getting information and those that may subscribe to newsletters or uh, see the information on social media may see it but that's not everybody uh, most organizations like ours have some sort of electronic learning management system uh, we specifically use uh, target solutions which is one of those learning management systems but they provide uh, the ability to upload content of all types, uh, videos, podcasts, diff different information, and then push it out to all the first responders. And then it records when they when they actually viewed it or consumed the information. Uh, they can put tests if they wanted to to make sure they actually uh, understood the information they received. And that's just a great mechanism uh, to make sure that uh, the information that first responders need about FirstNet and about what's happening uh, with this uh, this opportunity for public safety gets in their hands so they understand it and they can provide feedback uh, back up through their chains of command uh, on what they'd like to see too so it's a great way to get this done uh, in a very very efficient manner uh, throughout the each and every organization across the country thank you chief I appreciate your comments today in upcoming episode we're going to learn about the engagement we had with the city of Richmond Virginia and their use of data and how they are optimizing their operations operations through FirstNet. Thanks for listening today. We're excited to have you join our podcast community. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. You can learn more about the First Responder Network Authority at FirstNet.gov and learn about FirstNet products and services at FirstNet.com.